All right, so what is energy? Um, those of you who did the little introduction, um, if you've had a chance um, and introduced what energy was, it says that it's the ability to cause change or to do work. All right, and so that can actually happen to the object itself, or maybe it's something that's happening in the surroundings of that object, okay? So we have three little pictures here. Um, the first one is for strawberries. Oops, I'm blocking one of them. Um, strawberries. Um, so strawberries um, are a type of food. They're a plant. They're going to have that chemical energy that um, you were introduced to. Here we have some kids swinging, so they're actually moving. That was the mechanical energy, and we've got some, you know, they're up high, so we know that they've got actually, you know, a lot of potential to fall back down. Um, and then we have this um, sun, okay, which is going to be able to provide us light. Um, it can provide heat. You've got the nuclear fission um, that's going on in the sun. There's lots of things that are going on with the sun with energy. Um, and another thing that was introduced to you was that energy is measured in um, joules. So that's a new unit force. Energy and work will both be in joules. All right, so um, these are the ones that we um, were introduced to. We have chemical energy, which you're going to find stored in batteries. Um, electrical, which you know is in most things that you um, can plug in, you can flip switches for, you have wires run that are going to help that electron flow around. You've got mechanical, which is really where we're going to focus today, um, kinetic and potential energy there. Um, so this is the things that are in moving or have potential to move. We have nuclear energy, fission and fusion, okay, things that are found in the sun. Remember we talked about that back in um, unit four, where you have the combining of the nuclei or the breaking apart of the nuclei. You have light energy, sometimes that might be called radiant energy, um, you know, production of light. You have electromagnetic energy, um, we're talking about, um, you know, moving of those electrons and also can cause, you know, some magnetism. And you have heat, or sometimes might be called thermal. All right, so um, the law of conservation of energy was another thing that was introduced in that first little intro. Um, just like where we couldn't create or destroy matter, we cannot create or destroy energy, okay? It just changes its form from one form to another. All right, so here we have um, some explanations of kinetic and potential. So kinetic energy is when things are in motion, okay? Um, whereas um, potential would be it has the potential to move. All right, so we have an equation here. Kinetic energy is one-half mv squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the triangle because even though this has um, the one-half in it, we can still put it in a triangle. So we're going to pop Ke up top, okay? I'm going to go ahead and convert one-half to 0.5 m and v squared, okay? Now, um, you know we like to put units in. So since this is energy, energy is going to be measured in joules. Half is just a number. It doesn't need a unit. Mass is going to be kilograms. And velocity, if you remember, was meters per second. Okay? Um, so hopefully you can see that. Um, and there's not a weird glare. Um, but I did need to turn the light on so that we can see that. So we have kinetic energy up top. You have 0.5. You have m and v squared. This is for mass and this is for velocity. All right. Turn these back down. All righty. Um, so it says we're going to find the kinetic energy of a 10 kilogram bowling ball that is rolling at three meters per second. You try and see. Yeah, you're not going to be able to see anything like that. All right. So I'm going to turn this back on. I'm probably going to write that a little bit bigger so we can see that all together. All right. So we have Ke at the top of my triangle. I have 0.5, I have m, and I have v squared. All right, so, um, and I need to grab a calculator. Sorry, guys. I thought I had all my stuff together. All right, um, so I'm trying to find the kinetic energy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 0.5, because remember, if I cover that up, times my mass is 10 kilograms. And I'm going to multiply that times the velocity, which is 3 meters per second, and I've got to square that. So I'm going to punch in my calculator, 0. 0.5 times 10 times 3 squared, and I end up with 45. So my answer would be 45 joules would be the kinetic energy. So 0. 0.5 times 10, which is essentially half of 10, which is 5, times 3 squared, which is 9, 5 times 9 is 45. 
All right, so there's all that, those answers going there. So you can see, even if you couldn't see my triangle work, now you can see step by step how I got there. All right. All right, now potential energy. So we know that if kinetic energy is the energy of things that are in motion, potential is the things that have um, the ability to change or to do um, some sort of work or change. So um, it's stored, it's not yet moving, but it's stored in that object. All right, there are two different types. You have elastic, okay, that's an object that can be stretched or compressed. So there's a picture of a spring here, okay, so that if you pull the spring, okay, it has the potential then to bounce back, okay. Um, think about pulling back a rubber band, okay, you're storing energy when you play pinball and you pull back the lever, okay, and it hadn't yet, um, you know, released, it's about to release all that energy on the ball and shoot it through the, through the game. Um, so there's my examples there. Um, and then the gravitational, okay, this is the energy that is stored in objects that can fall. So I mentioned earlier with the little kids on the swing, if they are up, Okay, they have a chance to fall. Okay, if you put something on a shelf, it could fall down. Okay, a tree branch up in the tree falling. Okay, it has a chance to fall. That's potential. We're going to focus on the gravitational. We know there's elastic, but when we start doing our um, measurements and calculations, it's all going to be on gravitational. Okay, objects that can fall. Come on, buddy. You won't go to the next slide. Okay, so calculating um, gravitational, here is our equation, PE equals MGH. So because you know Ms. Griffin loves her triangles, we're going to put it in a triangle. We're going to put P up top, M, G, and H, okay? Once again, it's potential energy, so that's stored in joules. I have M, which is mass, that's going to be kilograms. Height is going to be meters, that's what H stands for. And this G is gravity, so that's an acceleration, meters per second squared. Okay, now if it doesn't tell you anything different, that's always going to be 9.8 meters per second squared because that's what gravity is. Okay, um, so we have our energy, which is our answer we're going to be looking for is in joules. We have mass and gravity, remember those together made weight. And then we have our height, which is in meters. Okay, all right, so. It says, Joe's sundrop can is on his desk, one meter above the floor. The mass of the can is 0.5 kilograms. Find its potential energy. So remember, once again, potential energy is mass times gravity times height, okay? So I'm looking for potential energy. So potential energy is gonna be equal to the mass of the can, all right? It is 0 0.5 kilograms. I'm going to multiply that times gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared, or actually, we're just going to say 9.8 for simplicity, times the height, which was one meter. So if I get my calculator and I say 0.5 times 9.8 times one, I'm going to end up with 4.9 joules, okay? So that would be the potential energy of that sun drop can. All right, so there's that. Oops, all right. I'm gonna erase all mine so you can see what's actually printed nice and pretty. All right, now, Miss Baker is gonna make John put the can in his backpack on the floor. Now we're gonna find the potential energy. So the can hasn't changed its mass. It's still 0 0.5 kilograms. It hasn't changed gravity because it's still here on Earth, meters per second squared. But now the height, because it's on the floor, is going to be zero. So that's going to be zero um, meters. So if I say 0 0.5 times 9.8 times zero, because it's saying times zero, the potential energy is zero joules. Okay, anything that's sitting on the floor is zero. And I, oh, okay. oh all of a sudden I thought, I'm not recording, but I am recording. Okay, see, just as silly on tape as I am in person, guys. All right, so moving on, and there's that one. Okay, so zero joules. All right, so now, here we have this diagram, okay? 
Um, so if you think about, and if you watch a little introduction video, you had the um, roller coaster and it talked about as it was going uphill, it was storing energy. And then when it was going down here, you had your kinetic, okay? So when you're at the top of the hill, you have the greatest potential energy because you have the furthest distance that you can fall. Your mass never changes. Gravity's not gonna change. So the only thing that's gonna change is height. So the higher you are, the more potential energy you have. All right, so highest PE, lowest kinetic. Because if you're at the top, you don't have a lot of velocity. You've had to go really slow to climb and get up there. But as you start to fall, your potential is gonna decrease, but your kinetic is gonna increase. Because as you go down the hill, you get faster. And then as you climb back up, the kinetic would in, um, decrease, but the potential would increase, okay? Um, same thing, think about like a batter that's hitting a baseball. They're gonna have the highest kinetic energy at that first impact where they swing because they've got the most velocity on it. But as it goes through, okay, um, gravity, it's gonna be decreasing that kinetic, okay? Lots of potential up here, and then it swaps. So wherever kinetic is high, potential is low. Potential is high, kinetic is low. All right, now, um, going through um, sort of what you did in that first little introduction video, just kind of making sure we know the different types of energy and maybe how they change. That's what's at the end of this show, just to kind of reiterate what you did in that first little intro. So batteries, okay, they are chemical inside of them. There's chemicals inside. But when you actually put them into something, they're going to make electrical things happen. They're going to um, actually let those electrons flow to allow electrical energy to happen. All right, an electric car that is running on batteries, okay, um, it's running on batteries, so that's chemical, and that's going to make the electrics of the car work, as well as the mechanical pieces of the car, okay? All right, um, next, we have a gasoline automobile, okay? So if it's a gasoline automobile, gas is chemical, and when it makes that automobile work, okay, you get mechanical because that's what's actually making that motor move. All right, sunlight. Sunlight is nuclear. We talked about the fission and fusion processes. It's gonna make heat. Some of us love to sit outside and feel the warmth from the sun. That's me. And it gives us light, okay? Makes the um, earth so nice and bright. Food. Food is chemical. It just changes the type of chemical it is. When you consume it, it's got one set of chemicals, the glucose that you're gonna be getting in, and your body is gonna break it down for the other things that it needs, okay? So even though it's chemical, it starts as chemical and just changes to another type of chemical. An electric pencil sharpener. Well, it says electric, so we know that it's gotta start as electric energy, but it moves and you get mechanical. And then you could also say that it makes sound energy, that it makes um, heat, okay, all of those two. But we're talking about like making the, the moving parts go and then the mechanical maybe causes some other things. Wood, wood is chemical, okay? It's a plant, it's got chemicals inside of it, so wood sitting there is chemical. All right, if you burn the wood, okay, that's chemical, and then when you burn it, it makes heat, okay, and it also is gonna produce light, okay? All right, now, um, now we're gonna talk about whether or not this is describing kinetic, which is moving, or potential, which is stored. So, a book resting on the shelf. Since it's resting on the shelf, that would definitely be potential energy, okay? It's not moving. A plane landing on a runway. Well, it says it's landing. That means there is motion, okay? There is kinetic energy there. All right, you stretched a spring, okay? It's stretched. That's potential. It's not moving. It's pulled out. It's ready to compress Maybe send that pinball all through the machine. A runner and their running blocks in the set position. So at the beginning of a track meet, when they're down and ready, okay, are they moving? No. So if they're not moving, okay, it's potential. If you've ever watched somebody at a race, or maybe some of my track folks, um, have, this has actually happened to you, um, you're stored a lot of energy, and if all of a sudden, 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 you fall, okay, that's a great deal of stuff falling because you're ready to go. And so if all of a sudden you stumble, okay, you're going to have a, a big commotion, a big fall there. A car slowing down at a caution light because it is moving, that is kinetic. Um, a hanging basket of flowers. If it's hanging, okay, that's going to be potential. It hasn't moved yet. Um, glass hitting the floor and breaking, okay? If it's falling to the floor, there is kinetic energy. 
Um, if you pull back on a rubber band, okay, you're storing the energy to get ready to shoot it across. An apple that's hanging from a tree, once again, hanging, states that it's potential.